welcome to Passport Adventures, where every week I'll be your tour guide as we travel the countries of the world from the comforts of home. Where are we headed this week? This week we're headed to Italy, a country in Europe that's shaped like a boot. Let's get on that plane. city of Rome. The city of Rome is over 3,000 years old. And you'll notice there's no skyscrapers or billboards or giant signs. The city of Rome's skyline has remained pretty much the same for hundreds of years. If we head south, ah, we'll find some beautiful tropical locations. There are wonderful farming villages, and mountain countryside. In fact, this is the part of Italy that borders the Alps in Switzerland that we've heard about before, where they get snow. So Italy is really a variety of climates. These habitats that range from beaches to mountains are home to some really cool animals. The official animal of Italy is the Italian wolf. There's also a Sardinian long-eared bat, a Sicilian wall lizard, oh, the stoat, which is also called an ermine. He changes coat in the winter to blend into his surroundings and hide from predators. And the cat, wait, the cat? <laughs> yes, the cat. There are 300,000 stray cats living in the city of Rome. It's against the law to harm them, and there's a good reason. Since ancient times, cats have been used to get rid of a much more um, invasive species, the rat. <laughs> there are lots of wonders in the city of Rome. There's the Colosseum. The Colosseum was built in the year 70. Yeah, the year 70. That's about 2,000 years ago. It was built to be a center for entertainment and could hold 50,000 spectators. The Sistine Chapel is another Roman landmark at a mere 500 years old. It is the home of some magnificent art. In fact, all around Rome, you'll find all kinds of works by Donatello, Raphael, Leonardo, and Michelangelo. No, no, not those guys. These guys. We have Donatello, Leonardo da Vinci, Raphael, and Michelangelo. Hmm. <laughs> Raphael and Michelangelo. And here is some of their amazing, priceless works of art. The Mona Lisa, the Statue of David, and the Last Supper. Ah, here we are in Pisa, with one of the most recognizable buildings in the world, the Leaning Tower of Pisa. They began construction on this bell tower in the year 1173. By the time they put the second story on top, they noticed the building was tilting a little bit. That's because this building is made of marble. How much marble? 32 million pounds of marble. And even though the 186 foot tall tower has been sinking, Engineers say it will stay up for another 200 years. Today you can climb the 295 steps to the top if you want a bird's eye view of the city. I'm going to skip that today. <laughs> We're going to head off to another city. Oh, I love this one. This is Naples. 
Look at the colors of these houses. Wow, such beautiful water. But there's more to Naples than beauty. Pizza was invented in Naples in the 1700s. You see, street vendors needed a food that was cheap to make, cheap to buy, and people could eat it while they were walking or working. Pizza quickly became a big hit, but it stayed local to Naples. Then, in the year 1889, King Umberto and Queen Margherita of Italy were visiting Naples. They wanted to try some of the peasant food. And when Queen Margherita was presented with this flavor of pizza, tomatoes, mozzarella cheese, and basil on top, she thought it was delicious and even wrote a letter back to the pizzeria man to tell him how much she loved this flavor of pizza. So they named it Margherita Pizza, and we still call it that today. Naples is also birthplace to this game. It's called Trombola. It's very similar to what we call bingo, but back in the 1700s, they started playing this game. And I'll have more about this game later. Let's head to another city. Venice, oh, the beautiful city of Venice with all of its canals. Many people travel in Venice by water. They hire a gondolier taxi. This is a gondola, and the man, ah, <laughs> is a gondolier. Instead of rowing with oars or using a motor, they have a giant stick that they sink to the bottom and push on until the gondola goes a little further. Now, not every street in Venice is a canal. There are regular streets, too. As a matter of fact, here are some kids playing on one of them. Now, if we want to introduce ourselves to these kids, the way we say hello to someone who we're friends with, someone friendly, not our boss or our teacher, we say, ciao! It's an informal way of saying hi. And these kids might have names like Leonardo or Sofia. Those are the two most popular names for Italian children right now. So we would say, ciao, Sofia! And maybe Sofia would let us in on a really cool event happening right about now. Carnival. Now, people all over the world celebrate a version of this. Uh, in fact, where were we? Brazil. We were in Brazil when we heard about this. What other country? Hmm. We've been all over the world. I'm a bit dizzy. Well, right before Lent, there's a big party. Here in the United States, we call it Mardi Gras. Over in Venice, it's Carnival, and it's one of the oldest continuing celebrations of this time of year. The kids there don't usually celebrate Halloween, but on Carnival days, they can get dressed up in costumes when they go to school. There are parades with floats, amusement park rides, Oh, wait a minute. Can't really see in this picture. This man is holding two giant bags of confetti. And that made me curious as to why he was holding two giant bags filled with confetti. And here's the reason why. <laughs> they throw handfuls of confetti at each other. Kids will just run around the streets tossing the confetti all around. It gets in your hair, in your mouth, all over your clothes, all over the street, and it's a lot of fun. Aha, and of course, every party needs a treat. And the treat they have is castagnole. It's kind of like a donut hole that could either be baked or fried and is either lemon or licorice flavor and sometimes they even put some goo on the inside. Now, the last thing I want to tell you about Carnival is this great party. <laughs> the Battle of the Oranges. Yes, these people are throwing oranges at each other. Let me get out of the way so you can see. This dates back to a time when the common people overthrew a horrible dictator in this section of Italy. Each year, about 7,000 people divide into nine teams, 
and they gather about 800,000 pounds of oranges. People dressed as villains working for the tyrant drive by in carts while throwing oranges at the people, and the people in the street also have oranges to throw. It's very messy and kind of dangerous. 16,000 spectators watch every year. They don't usually get hurt, though, because everyone's following the rules. And the most important rule is, if someone's wearing a red hat, they're the audience. Don't hit them. <laughs> After three days of this crazy fun, the streets are a mess of pulp and rind. And all that's left is the cleanup after the battle and a big snack of castagnole. Well, now it's time to say goodbye to Italy. And it's funny that the way you say goodbye is also the way you say hello. We say ciao. Sometimes they say ciao, ciao. And now it's time to say ciao and get back on that plane. Ciao. hour flight, not too bad. As usual, I want to do something to remind me about our trip. So in your packet, I have put three things. I've put a gondolier and a backdrop of Venice, a leaning tower of Pisa and a background to color, game cards for Trombola, and the numbers that you pick. Let's start with the gondolier. All right, now this is a 3D craft, so we want the gondolier to be rowing the gondola on the canal. So what we need to do, of course you are going to color yours. You're very artistic. Color it in, then take the bottom and fold it up about three inches. Press it down. That way you have a standing display. Then after you color your gondolier, all you need to do is take a piece of tape. There's a little tab at the bottom. You're going to fold that tab under and tape it on to the water. I almost called it the floor, but it would be the water. And that way, your gondolier will be rowing right under the Bridge of Sorrows. All right, Venice, there's your craft. Now, for the Tower of Pisa, Pisa uh, is a beautiful town, and there's lots of countryside and greenery. So on your blank piece of paper, you could color in whatever you want the background to look like. I would say probably lots of beautiful blue sky and lots of greenery would look nice. You could even make some teeny tiny people if you wanted to. Then, you might not want to color this because the tower is actually made of white marble. But you do need to cut it out. And then, dum dum dum, would help if I cut it out, wouldn't it? After you cut it out, you're going to fold these extra white tabs at the side. They aren't actually part of the tower. They're the part we're going to fold under. I'm doing a lot of folding today. I feel like I'm back in Japan doing origami. All right, now, if we just glued or taped it flat, it wouldn't be quite as impressive as the 3D effect we're going to get when we roll it a bit. Again, you will color whatever background you want want to put the pizza on the ground and tape 
one side down. Now, instead of pushing it all the way flat, this is the tricky part. Another piece of tape, or you could use glue stick. Going to stick your finger up in there a little bit and roll it so that it's a, a hill. This, of course, can get a little bit tricky, and I'm going to need to turn the paper. And you just tape down the tab. Now you have a 3D Tower of Pisa sticking out. Craft number two done. <laughs> now, if you want to play the game, uh, we have a sheet with six game cards on it and a paper with numbers one through 90. Each person who is playing gets one card. You'll see that unlike our bingo cards, not every number is written in. There are only 15 numbers written in. This person even gets a free space. That's a really lucky card right there. So to win the game, all 15 of your numbers have to have been called out. That's why everybody has different numbers on their cards. If everyone had the same number, everyone would win at the same time. You can either take turns picking numbers or have a person whose job it is to call the numbers. And then when your number on your card is called, you put something on top of it. I'm going to put a pony bead. You can use a dried bean, a little button, a little tiny Lego, whatever things you have that are little. Each person will need 15 of them. But that's as much as they're going to need because there's only 15 squares they have to fill. All right, so this is kind of how a game would go. I'm going to pretend that my card, I'm not going to give myself a lucky card. That would not be good sportsmanship. So I'm going to give Shane the lucky card. That's Shane's. And I'm going to give myself this card. Now, usually you're playing with more than one person. Like, but I'm doing this by myself just to give you an example of how the game goes. So I will pull a number. 35! I look on my card, I don't have 35. I look on Shane's card, he doesn't have 35. Next number, 23! Woohoo! I have 23 on mine! 23, woohoo! I put a bead on it, I cover it up. Does Shane have 23? He does not. But remember, he has that extra bonus space, so don't feel too bad for him. Next number is 3! Neither one of us have 3. The next number is... 61. 61. Neither one of us has 61. Now remember, the more people you're playing with, the better a chance that someone's going to have that number. Wait, did I just say 61? I wasn't trying to cheat, Shane. Really, I wasn't. Shane has 61. <laughs> All right, let's see who's the first person to get to. Da, 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 the pressure. 86. Oh, I have 87. Not quite good enough. 84. No, Shane has 83 though. Uh-oh, guess which one I just picked. I don't know if you can see it. 83. Shane for the win! Woo! <laughs> Again, you would play till all of your 15 numbers were covered, but for the sake of demonstration, we stopped there with Shane being the winner, which will make him feel better after he got trounced last week. <laughs> So thanks for joining me today on our trip to Italy. Where will we be headed next week? You'll have to tune in to find out. Until then, ciao everybody!